Hey YouTube, welcome to another requested video, kind of. Last week the awesome Serena Bobinas asked me to list my top 10 favourite horror movies and I was very happy to make that list until I sat down to start writing it and I realised how difficult a question that is. So I decided I would compromise and instead of making my top 10 favourite horror movies of all time, I would make a list of 10 horror movies that you may not have heard of. Obviously, I don't know what you have and have not heard of, but I never hear people talk about these movies and I think it might be because people haven't really seen them. So I thought I'd share some horror movies that you might not have heard of, but I really enjoy. So let's get into this list. At number 10 we have The Cottage, a slasher comedy about two bickering brothers who kidnap a ganglord's daughter and hide out at a remote cottage. Little did they know that this cottage is occupied by a psychopathic farmer and pretty soon heads start to roll. What I really liked about this movie was the design of the farmer and the kills were pretty awesome. It had some really funny moments and it even has Andy Serkis in a non-CGI role. So if you haven't watched The Cottage, it's pretty funny and it's worth watching. There's a lot of blood. At number 9 we have Doghouse, a horror comedy about a group of men that bring their recently divorced friend to a remote countryside village for a female free weekend of boozing. When they get there however, it turns out that every woman has been infected with a virus that turns them into manny in cannibals. This is a fun splatter movie that takes the battle of the sexes to a whole new level. At number 8 we have Creep from 2004. This is a lock-in movie about a woman who falls asleep while waiting for the last train in the London Underground. When she wakes up she realises that she is trapped in the underground and very soon it becomes apparent that she has been stalked by someone or something. This is a really cool movie based on setting alone. I absolutely love the London Underground and the thought of being trapped in there overnight is very cool. Obviously I wouldn't want to be stalked or anything but yeah, it's a pretty cool concept, and I think you will enjoy it. Yeah. At number 7 we have House of the Devil, a film by Ty West set during 1983. The story centres around a babysitter who accepts a job under mysterious circumstances. As the night goes on, she starts to realise that her clients may have a terrifying secret. Did I mention that this film is set during the full lunar eclipse, so you know weird shit's gonna happen? What I really like about this movie is Ty West's dedication to the time period. This really feels like the movie is taking place during 1983. I also like how suspenseful the movie is, and the movie feels like an old ghost story that you were told as a kid. It's very simplistic in nature, but very effective. At number 6 we have Dead End, a mysterious paranormal movie about a man who has been reluctantly bringing his wife and kids to his in-laws house each Christmas. This year however, when the family falls asleep, he decides to take his first shortcut in 20 years. If I'm being completely honest with you, I actually can't really remember this movie. It's here on principle alone, because I watched it when I was a teenager and it blew me away. I was so intrigued and I loved it so much that I couldn't stop thinking about it. Then I decided that I wouldn't watch this movie for years so that I could forget about it and watch it again as if it was the first time. So I think I'm about ready to watch this movie again. All I know is I loved it and I have been saying that this has been like my favourite horror movie for years and now I'm at the point where I can't really remember why. So I'm going to watch this one again and maybe I'll throw up a review. So yeah, take that as you will. This movie is here on principle alone. Yeah. <laughs> At number 5 we have Let Us Pray, another lock-in movie, this time starring Irish actor Liam Cunningham. The story takes place in a small Scottish town in a police station, when a rookie cop named Rachel arrests a mysterious stranger and puts him into lock-up. Soon all hell breaks loose. What I really liked about this movie was that our antagonist, Liam Cunningham's character, feels like an unstoppable force who rolls into this town and destroys everything in his wake. This is a really gory film that some people may struggle to watch, but if you're accustomed to gore, then it might actually seem tame. It really just depends on what you've been exposed to. Personally, I found it grand, but my friends found it really hard to watch. At number 4 we have Stakeland, a post-apocalyptic vampire movie. 
The story starts out with a teenage boy named Martin who is preparing to travel with his parents. Unfortunately, his parents are attacked and murdered by vampires, but luckily Martin is saved by a vampire hunter named Mister. Together, the two of them go on a road trip across a ravaged America to get to New Eden, formerly Canada. What I really liked about this movie is that it set up a whole world and it was really interesting seeing the destroyed America and the really badass vampires. This movie was really, really, it was just fucking food for the imagination, so it was. At number three, we have Splinter, a movie that I found to be very unique. I'm not going to even try summarise the plot, I'm just going to read the back of the box to you. A young couple on holiday are carjacked by an escaped convict. When their tires are punctured by a dead animal riddled with needle-like splinters, they have to take refuge in a deserted gas station. Little do they know that these splinters are from a parasitic organism that transforms its still-living victims into deadly hosts. Trapped inside the gas station, they realise they have to work together to fight this primal terror and get out alive. Yeah, splinter. Watch it. Pretty creative. Cool designs. Splinter. At number two we have Bug, a psychological horror film from the director of The Exorcist. This film stars Ashley Judd and Michael Shannon, who I feel both give Oscar-worthy performances. The story centres around an unhinged drifter who meets a lonely woman with an abusive ex-boyfriend. The two begin to form a relationship and lock themselves into a motel room. They slowly become more and more reclusive and believe that they are being infested by bugs. This is one of those movies that really messes with your head and you struggle to wonder what is real and what isn't. Honestly, with this film, the less you know about it, the better it will be. I really, really enjoyed Bug. The performances alone made it worthwhile. At number one, we have Seven Days, a French horror movie all about revenge. The story centers around a man who kidnaps, tortures and murders the man who raped and killed his daughter. Now I know this film sounds like it's just torture porn, which is actually an expression I really dislike, but this is so much more than torture. The story here is very important and it's all about how revenge has a great weight upon the soul. I know a lot of people say, oh if someone did that to my loved one that I would kill them or I would do this. Well, this movie shows the reality of the situation and what that does to a person and all the people you are connected to. I found the performances in here to be really haunting and some of the most natural acting I've ever seen. Honestly, this was a movie that stuck with me and it will make you feel sick, but it's not the torture that makes you feel sick. It's just the story. It's very, very hard to watch. I think you should watch this if you want to challenge yourself, but if you want something that's easy or fun, this isn't the movie to watch at all. So there you have it, 10 horror movies you may not have heard of. Thank you so much for sitting through my list and thank you so much Serena Bobinas for sending me this request. I know it's not exactly what you had in mind but hopefully you enjoyed the list regardless. And everyone, if you're not subscribed to Serena Bobinas, please check out her channel because she posts some great content. Anyway, that's my video. I hope you enjoyed my list. Um, please tell me if there's any movies that you think I might not have heard of and let me know if you'd heard of any of the movies below or if you're interested in watching them. So yeah, thank you. See you. Bye.